I'm Lima Milan, and I'm going to show you the Ableton Live interface. So to get started, first thing we need to do is obviously open up the software. Um, and what you'll see the first time is the sort of generic template. And this has two different types of tracks in the middle of the interface. One's audio, which is for audio recordings, uh, which could be loops or single sounds. Um, and then we have MIDI tracks as well, which contain the notes, which will then feed instruments, which will create the sounds as well. So main kind of navigation of uh, Ableton Live is we have our tempo and our metronome area up here, which is important to know about straight away. We have a main transport section where we have uh, start and stop. And then we have a record uh, option for one of the workflows in Ableton Live, which is called arrangement view. And then we have a record button here, which is for another recording mode called session view. So if we move over to the right hand side, you'll see there's some uh, switches, switching markers here. And if we click those, we move between the two different workflows of Ableton Live. So this is arrangement view, which is very much like a classic traditional view where the time runs from left to right. So if I press the space bar, you'll see our cursor starts moving through the musical measurements and everything would be sequenced running across the screen and therefore played when the cursor passes over it. If we move over to session view for a minute, the key difference here is that we press play within a looping section. So there'll be a row of uh, ideas or clips as they're called in Ableton Live, which will sit here and we can just press play to them in different rows and we're free from having the confines of working from left to right and we can move between ideas and clips whenever we want. So over on the left is the live browser. There's a lot of different sections for this. We have a sound section which lets us kind of do a shortcut to getting the types of sound we want to load into a project. Then we have drums, which is, as you can expect, orientated around just percussive kind of sounds. And then the instruments that provide some of the uh, sounds that we want can be kind of uh, navigated to directly. Um, for instance, there's a synthesizer here called Analog, and if I double click this, just the instrument loads in as a default with no actual pre-designed sound in there as well. So depending on what your needs are for the workflow of your, your project, you can load them in at different uh, stages of, of sound design. We have audio effects, which is all about adding to existing audio within your project. Um, and then you can shape sounds or make them more suitable for your mix. MIDI effects is tied to these sorts of tracks here where we'll have notes feeding sound sources and then they'll play. Um, and we can interfere with the information by using uh, MIDI effects here. Max for Live is quite an advanced section, but it's, a, it's an open area within Ableton Live, which allows us to add in lots of different um, additional devices, uh, which can let us do a lot of creative or very practical alterations to the main kind of uh, elements you're presented with within Ableton Live. So the plugin section allows us to access third party uh, devices or plugins um, within Ableton Live. So that can be instruments or additional audio processing that we buy and bring into the environment from elsewhere. Clips are pre-packaged audio loops ready directly to go into Ableton Live. And then samples can be loops that will work and load into Ableton Live from any kind of source, um, whether it's from the Ableton Live library or externally, and also can be single sounds that aren't meant to loop and we actually decide when they play and sequence those ourselves. The pack section is an area which I've fully populated. I've installed the entire Ableton Live library in this setup. Um, but you can load in the different parts from your um, from the Ableton website. The user library is where you store all your preferred saved states of different devices, depending on your workflow. Current project is, as it says, accessing anything to do with the actual project that you have at the moment. And then we have this add folder section here, which is useful for adding external uh, locations from your computer or external hard drives as well. Uh, other things to look at within our main kind of interface is we have very handy info view down here. And the info view um, allows us to know the names and the nature of anything that our cursor hovers over. Um, and also there's show hide buttons which appear all around the Ableton Live interface which is, allows us to basically show and hide certain aspects of the environment. Resizing can happen just by grabbing the edge of these window borders. So depending on what we want to see and what type of view we have, we can change the, the size of what it is we see. Um, and then once we've started populating aspects of Ableton Live, we have a either 
a device view or a clip view down in this bottom section, which you'll see being used as we kind of develop our ideas within our project. The last thing to state really is that Ableton Live projects are actually called Ableton Live Sets. So when we go to File and we want to start a new project, you go to New Live Set. And as when I opened up Ableton Live before, the default area is this template that we have here at this point. And then when we want to basically save our work, we go to File and Save Live Set and give it a name and save it to our preferred location on our computer. So that's the main navigation of Ableton Live. We looked at the Live Browser. We looked at the lower clip and device view area down here. Looked at the info view box. The main core differences between arrangement view and session view. And then a little bit of an overview of our tempo, metronome, and transport areas of the software.